this was a mistake. <laughs> he's he's using a scripted general. He he starts the game with as well. And his name is Jean Barreau. He's a four four versus our guy who's a three three. So he is much better than ours. Oof. All right. Combat in EU4 is broken up into two phases, shock and fire. Uh, fire always comes first, so it goes fire, shock, fire, shock, fire, shock, back and forth, back and forth. Every phase of combat, you you just deal some casualties, you deal damage, and there's a dice now, involved. This is like such a Civ player question, but like, do, is it... I'm sorry, but are the animations always the same, or like, do the like units change over time, or like, are there... There are... Like, there are packs that you can get that change the the way that individual units do look on the map. If you actually zoom in really close, you can actually yeah. see because you're using the same DLC that I have, we do have not animations, but they are different. See how the the yeah, guy on the left, see the, like the different like clothes he's wearing. Yeah, that that's about it. But yeah, infantry will always look like infantry. Cavalry will always look like cavalry. If you go over to India, they get to ride elephants though. That's cool. That's cool. And they do have guns later. They have they fire little muskets and stuff. So this is is there's the history of E4. Actually, European Universalis 4 is based on an old tabletop game that used dice. So we're rolling dice for combat. Mm -hmm. um, when you have the the actual battle selected, we have rolled a seven in the first fire phase, and Jean Bro has rolled a four. At the bottom it says Jean Bro four, and then there's like a one. Mm -hmm. He gets an advantage every time there's a fire phase because he is a 4-4 four, four general. He has four fire pips, four shock pips. We only have three, so he has an advantage. So every time, no matter what, he'll always have that plus one. So we rolled pretty well in the first phase, but overall, France has more, more total morale than we do. Yep. And he's also got a bigger army, and this is probably not going to go well. Every uh, phase of combat is just three days, so we're going to go there. Oh, nice. Yeah, we rolled a zero in the first shock phase. Cool. Oh we're possibly going to get stack wiped. Um, you have to stay in combat for four phases, 12 days minimum. So we have to stay in combat until uh, May the 14th, and we might just get stack wiped outright. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, the good news oh, is... Oh, shit, we lost. <laughs> the good news is when you lose your army, you suddenly have a lot more money coming in every month. So that's good. We tried. We tried, chat. It was, um, it was perhaps not a good decision. <laughs> No, it wasn't. I'm bad. No, it's, it's okay. We'll conquer the whole world. No, no worries. <laughs> oh, no. I need... Yeah, chat wants me to teach you how to berate your generals in order to roll better. I constantly yell at my generals. I tell them to stop rolling zeros, <laughs> and eventually they start rolling better. So, uh, let's just rebuild some... Wait, infantry. we have a gift to the state. Good, uh, good governors would sometimes prompt the nobility and the businessmen of the realm to donate cash to the treasury, out of pure patriotism or in exchange for the sales or transfer of honorary titles and positions. We can put into the treasury or spend it generously. Gain 22.80 uh, ducats, or we can gain 10 prestige. All right. So, yeah, you are going to be getting almost all of the actual pop-up events. Since we're both playing the same country, they get assigned to... It either rotates, or I think it just gives them all to the second player who joins the nation. So that's you. So that's good, because, you know, I know what all events are. Nice cookie. Can I have one? Oh my gosh, that looks delicious. It's a really good cookie. <laughs> I did just hire some extra infantry because we just lost our entire army, and we don't want to have no army, so... Um... I'm going to put it into the treasury to give us money. All right. Yeah, that's good. Prestige is also nice. It does give some tangible effects, like morale and other things, but just in general, money. Money's always good. All right, let's uh, maybe change gears for a second. We're officially out of the war now. Okay. We weren't in the war in the first place. We had only rented out a single stack, and that stack is now dead, so we're basically not involved. So we're back in peace mode then, and our diplomats have done a decent job building up spy networks, so we can fabricate claims on Granada and on Morocco. There's two ways to do that. You okay. can either click on the province that you want to claim on, or you can click on you can just right-click on Morocco, and somewhere in this list under covert actions is fabricate claim. Okay, hold on. I, I usually use the provinces because I just find it to be easier. So, like, we want to claim on Tangier. Tangiers. Which is right next to our and province ten, of... Tangiers, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're doing okay. it from the province, it's going to be right here. Okay, it's going to reduce the size of our spy network. Mm -hmm. So we're spending okay. spy network to now have a claim, which is a it's going it. to give us a casus belly. And we want to do the same thing with Granada. Either on Gibraltar or Malaga. Let's do Gibraltar. Nice. Good. 
Okay. Now, the first claim costs 20 Spy Network Strength if you have no modifiers. The second claim costs 25, and then 30, and then 35, etc. So the more claims you try to fabricate, the more expensive it gets. All right. Um, we have we have gained the Cassispelli uh, Conquest. Okay, it's against Morocco. What a surprise. So... Right, that came from the claim we just did. Yeah, okay. All right, how much longer on this Regency? Until 15th of January, 47. So about four more months till our birthday. Okay. <laughs> if you want, we could uh, get more claims now, actually. Since we have 26 by network on both of these guys, we could fabricate again. So pretty good idea to just go for, like, Malaga on Granada, and then a lot of people will, like, prefer clean borders because it looks pretty. I don't usually play that way. I'm more, like... No, some of those borders got real nasty during that land oh, part. Yeah. Like, yeah. nasty. Tactical. It's gotta be tactical. Ugh. Twitch suggests that I should explain troop movement. Uh, what do you guys mean? Troop movement's very similar to the Navy. Um... You know, the army has to exist in one place or another, so it's it's always going to be in one province or not in a province. Mm -hmm. So you just just box select and right click to move it. We already have military access through Castile, so we can put put the army there. I am moving the army over near Granada because I know that the regency is ending soon, and we're probably going to want to declare a war on somebody. So we might as well have the army nearby. Uh, uh, Harold from Granada. They tell us a pretender rises. Mustav, nephew of Muhammad. Once beloved by all, has raised an army and can stall himself as Esmir. Esmir? Esmir? Um, we have now arrived at such an end. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, they're not happy about something. Yep. <laughs> you see the... Go look at Granada right here. That's that nine okay, yeah. stack. That's uh, pretender rebels. They're trying to change the government, change the ruler for Granada. Right now, Muhammad the Ninth Nasrid is in charge, and this guy wants to take over the throne. So he's dealing with like a little disaster or event or something. And uh, we have a truce okay. with Granada, so we can't actually attack him yet, but it'd be a good time to, to take advantage of him, if we could. I think Granada's about to get beaten down. It's getting attacked by the, uh, the rebels. Yeah, I see that. Oh, wow, nice. You are good luck. So we, uh, we have a random... We have a new king! Yep, we have a new king, and we have a very good heir. Our heir is eight years old. He's probably our brother. Joao or something like that. Davis. And he is a 353, which is above average. So King Afonso is not the best, but the heir is pretty good. We'll take that. All right. All right. Chat thinks I'm not explaining enough things. We're not. We're playing too fast somehow. <laughs> okay. Which is a, is a joke. I mean, I'm, I'm like kind of following along. Like if I haven't, like if I miss something, I'm just going to ask you again. So. Right. All right. So. Until we um, were out of the Regency, we weren't allowed to declare any actual offensive wars. Now, you could just not declare offensive wars. You could just play peacefully. Some people like to play tall, which is where you, you just develop your country and you don't really expand much. Other people like to paint the map. They just want to conquer the whole world, like you. So we should probably attack somebody. But to do that, we need to kind of assess, like, how strong people are and like, can we actually beat them, that kind of thing. Okay. This, I'm going to so, tell you right now, this is very different than the way I play Civ, because when I play Civ, I mostly go for, like, cultural, diplomatic, science victories. I don't usually go for, like, a domination. Really? So why do you yeah. want to conquer the world? What? I, I, I do want to conquer the world. I just, like, this is scary. <laughs> well, after our experience with France, yeah, you can see why I, I made that first reaction, where you're like, let's ravel France. <laughs> France is really strong, and they've got really good generals yeah. at the start of the game. All right, uh, we have to wait for our truce to be up with Granada if we want to attack, but we could call Castile into a war against Morocco right now. And that yeah, let's, would... let's fuck up Morocco. I'm sick of them raiding our coast, those jerks. I can sympathize and empathize with that. Let's do that. All right, so before we go to war, we should probably prepare the army a bit. So okay. go back to F14. F14, got it. You're on the economy screen right now. We want to raise army yep. maintenance. All right, how far? All the way up? I would usually raise it... Like, if you're going to go to war, generally speaking, just put it all the way to full. There is some right. min-maxing you can do. You don't always have to have full morale, even while you're at war. But it's easier for newer players to just 
Just max it out, not worry about it. Alright, so now we need to wait just a couple months for our morale to recover. You see that little red and green bar next to our army? Yeah. There's like a tiny sliver of green and then a big, big portion of it is red. That's representative of how much morale we have out of the max. So the army is very low on morale. Wow, they're very unhappy. Yeah, well, they were they were basically turned off. They were mothballed. Morale, like, it's not like how happy they are. It's just more like how long can they fight? How organized are they? We have another event. Okay, wait, the uh, the Duke of Coimbra? I'm sorry, I'm reading it. I don't know if you want me to read it out loud. Hmm. I'm actually familiar with this event, but if you want to read it, I think the Duke of Coimbra event was a historical event. So there's a lot of... Yeah, King Alfonso was only six years old when he became the King of Portugal. For the first six years of his reign, the country has been ruled by the Duke of Coimbra. There are now many in our court trying to frame him as a would-be rebel. And then we have two options. So it was true, death to him and his men, which is gain one stability. And then we must place trust in our dear friend and mentor, which is we get the Duke of Coimbra until death. And then our trade efficiency goes up 10% and our national tax modifier goes up 10%. So would you rather be like, you could role play this, right? You could actually like read all the text and like really get into it. Or you could just focus on the numbers and modifiers. Uh, <laughs> stability is- We must is... place trust in our friend and mentor. He's our friend, sure. So yeah, we would never betray our friend <clears throat> Castile or the Duke of Coimbra. We would never betray them ever. We would never betray them. He's our friend. So yeah, take whichever one you want. I, uh, I took the mentor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's fine. Those, I mean, My role e player is coming out. Oh, no. Either option's a good thing, right? It's not a bad event. So either way, <laughs> you're, you're getting something good. So whatever you prefer. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to add a claim to Morocco and to Granada. Are you guys really? <clears throat> oh, my God. They're um <clears throat> actually following me on Twitch. Guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm so- that's really sweet. I just wanted to let chat know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, we probably should wait like at least two or three more months to make sure that we have enough morale. See how the morale okay. bar is a little bit more green, a little bit less red? Yeah. We recover about 21% a month, so about five months to get to full. Okay. And that's probably good enough. By the time we actually get anywhere near having to fight anybody, they're at like 80%, one more one more monthly tick, they'll be at the full strength. So we're not like at maximum strength right now because of that <clears throat> that stack wipe with France. But we're relatively strong-ish. We could probably beat Morocco. But we should probably talk about the ledger and how you can assess relative strength of enemies. So there is a massive ledger in this game called the ledger. Just press the L key. Okay. This is the ledger. Yeah. It's big. There's like 40 pages here. We're going to press Oh my F. god, for real? Yeah, yeah. Just keep pressing next. You can cycle through tons of pages of information. Or oh my can... gosh. Okay. Yeah, I see. Oh, wow. Or we could just press the F3 key to go to a specific section about military. Got it. Then press the right arrow key to go to the next page. And this is the page we really care about. Armies tab. Now there's filters at the top. We want to use... Uh, let's check the box for allies. Okay, and rivals on the And screen. rivals, yep. yep. And that way we can actually see, like, the most relevant people to our country. Oh, fuck! France is huge! Yeah. Yep, you rival them. Good job. <laughs> they oh, have, fuck! <laughs> three times our army strength, yep. It's fine, it's fine. It's right. fine, it's fine. It's, it's fine. Listen, it's, listen, it's at fine. least in Civ, like... I could stomp on France, okay? Like, I'm usually so rich by this point. Like, I, it doesn't matter if I have an army. I can, like, buy one in, like, a turn. Right. Shit. Yeah. Chat says that you're starting to see it. Like, you're starting to see the mistake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, guys, yeah. Oops. So, what we really care about, though, is actually Morocco right now. So, we have 10. Uh, this ledger shows uh, columns. You've got infantry, cavalry, artillery, mercenaries, manpower, and then total. We have 10,000 troops total against Morocco's 15,430 total. So he has more men than we do. But if we call Castile into the offensive war, he will bring 23,000 troops to the party, which means we have overall about the same number of troops. Okay, so that's not so bad. We could probably win, but it's 
if we hadn't taken that stack wipe we'd be declaring right now, I think we might want to either hold off for a bit or train some more troops first, because that's let's let's hold off. I don't I don't I'm not I don't want to lose the next war. Like I want to win. Me too. Uh, <laughs> it would be rather embarrassing to lose the first war. So let's do this then. I'm gonna adjust the army maintenance slider to about fifty percent, so that we're kind of on like like half readiness, so we don't have to wait the full five months. We'll pull the army back a little bit further away, just in case, and let's train a couple infantry. I haven't shown you yet how to train infantry, so like, like most things in this game, there are multiple different ways to do it. The easiest way is to press the B key to pull up your macro builder interface. Okay, B key. And this is another thing with pages and tabs and just so much things, right? So once you have the macro builder open, there are technically, what, 10 or 11 tabs? The very first mm -hmm. tab, though, is land units. So just click on Latin Medieval Infantry. Okay. And then it like colors the map and shows you the price and how many days. Okay. I would I would hire like another four infantry right now. You just click okay. on like click the little plus in each province. Does it matter do, where? I would spread it out. Instead of doing it in one province, it'll take four times as long. You can spread like one in each province. Okay. So yeah, like Lisboa. Okay, so walk me through your strategy here. How? Why did you choose Porto? I don't know. <laughs> just... Okay. Was it's, that a bad? Was that a bad? It's, it's, it's pretty far away. I mean, we have to wait for that army to merge with the rest of the army. So you could do like Evora, maybe. Can I take it back? Yes. Okay, so no, it's not a big deal. Like, I'm just giving you a hard time. But like, <laughs> if, if an army has not been built at least 10% of the way, you can freely cancel it. You get all your money back, all the manpower back, no no big deal. Same thing with buildings okay, cool. and ships and pretty much everything in the game. If it's less than 10% complete, full refund. If it's more than 10% complete, you get a half refund. So, okay. yep. And like, you could even take it a step further and you could like train this guy down here instead, just so they're a little closer to where we want them. But okay. it's not really a big deal. So it was kind of funny. Um, Denmark has declared war on Levo. Livonian. So just playing, you know. Um, okay, let's. You want to see what's happening with Nova uh, with Novgorod? Yeah. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm just checking chat. Um, She's much more diligent uh, diligent about reading chat than than I am. I'm sorry. Streaming. I'm just like I also <laughs> want to make sure I'm interacting with them too. I'm listening to you. I mm -hmm. promise. You remember when Muscovy declared war on Novgorod? Um. Okay. Wait. No. No. Boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're murdering Novgorod. They have basically got oh the entire, yeah, I see that. The entire okay, country wow. is occupied. Big oof. Chat says they like you more because you listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> I also just want to say thanks. Like, my, my shit's blowing up and I, I appreciate it. My Twitter is what really needs help right now. I just want to hit 1K on Twitter. So. <laughs> Oh, another why, thing, why do you ignore them? I just saw that. Yeah, why do you ignore them? I don't ignore them. I usually, I'm concentrating. It's a grand strategy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, wait. We have a herald from o Odo Odoyev. Um, my king, Odoyev, accepted peace from their former enemies in the following terms. Oh, okay. So it's just, all I say is fine. Yeah, that's fine. Nice. Uh, trade disbanded. Trade League of Novograd has disbanded. There's not enough members after, okay, yeah, because they just got their shit wrecked. Yep. So his prestige went either too low or because Odiev, yeah, Odiev just got separate pieced. Yeah. So he's out of the war, and that means Novgorod has no more trade league members, so his trade league's gone. <laughs> what duo stream? Oh, it's Monk Lady. <laughs> <laughs> Monk Lady. Yeah, am I more recognizable without my, like, glasses on? I chose the specific pair because I didn't think they would obstruct my face that much. Like, am I really that hard to recognize? I, I feel guess... like Clark Kent. Oof. Oh, well, I think it's safe to say that there are a lot of people who didn't watch the EU4 LAN party. And they didn't see the uh, stream. Like, they don't know That's because fair. they don't know you outside of that context. But there are also a lot of people that were here when we did the, uh... Oh, <laughs> Gammy Dragon, no, we're just stupid. <laughs> That's, yeah. Well, at least you're honest. No. All right. Um, it's Evelyn. Oh, there's some people here from um, the Tabletop crew. Hi, guys. I think that's my character's name. 
I think we might want to just be safe and wait for the truce with Granada. I, I, I like, think that's a good idea, too. Like you, I would prefer to not lose wars here after that France debacle. Oh, there you are. There's one curl. Okay. So we have can... a new pope. There's a new pope. Yeah, France is the Curie controller. Oh God, that's not good. That we don't like that. Might want to send a diplomat off to improve relations with the pope. <laughs> yep, I was just about to say, should we send a diplomat to yeah. get the pope to like us? Make sure that he doesn't excommunicate us because France says so. Yeah. Ooh. All right. I am sending a. Uh, yes, confirm and prove relations. Our ally England is going through a an event, a disaster yep, called just, yep. War of the Roses. Yep. However, England just won. All right, so England just separate piece to Scotland. Oh, and our royal marriage with England just ended. Yep, because he, he was the one that sent the offer, and then the War of the Roses event fired, which changed his ruler. So effectively, the person that we were married to died. That's why the Royal Marriage ended. Okay. So what happened here is that England is in the 100 Years War and he's fighting against France as the aggressor. France called in Scotland, who he allied, as a defender. So England, instead of like defending his continental holdings, just basically ignored all of it and then just went north and murdered Scotland. So he's just conquered two provinces, West March and East March from Scotland. Also, how does the AI function in this game? Is it like personality based, kind of like like in Civ where it's like, oh, you know, India is always passive until like, you know, the nuclear era. Or is it like, you know, France is always culture based and gets really butthurt when you start get making great people like. OK, it depends on random. It's, it's random, but it's also something you could actually like look at. So if you right click on like, say, France. There's two things that we care about. There's a really tiny little icon next to the, the word king. If you hover over the tiny, tiny icon, it looks like a little hammer. It says personality administrator. The French ruler is an administrator. They will seek to improve their economy by any means available, but they are less prone towards war unless it furthers their trade interests. So there's like four or five different personality types that the AI can get, and it's just random. Okay. And but it's there's... random every game. It's not assigned per country. It's, it's random per ruler, so the scripted oh, start right. okay. in 1444 will almost always have the same same traits, but it, it can be different every single game. Now, okay. even even more important, though, if you hover over the actual king, King Charles VII, in this big tooltip, it says, King Charles VII de Valois, inaugurated on 11th November, and then he's got three personality traits. He's an inspiring leader, well-advised, and cruel. And each of those traits affects the way the AI plays. Got it. Okay. That's leader. actually really interesting. I feel like that adds a little bit more to um, the AI because it it keeps it, it will keep changing and uh, altering how they play. And I think that's that makes for me. I think that would that makes a really interesting single player game because I mean, after a while, once you know all the AI patterns in like Civ, which m more or less they've stayed the same since like Civ three, mm -hmm. like. I mean, you know exactly what to do to either stay out of their way, what they're going to do. Like, you know, oh, America's always going to betray you at the, you know, Industrial Revolution. Like, you mm -hmm. always know what's going to happen. But this is pretty cool. I like that the different leaders can influence. And, like, can you go in and, like, assassinate leaders and stuff like that? There or is was... that more, like, on the era of Crusader King? That's more CK2, yeah. But there was. Okay. There was one very, very short window of time where you could actually use the spy network. And if you had a 100 spy network in a country you could kill their ruler. Okay. Um, it was overpowered and people hated it in multiplayer because they would just all kill each other. And <laughs> so yeah, they got rid of that, but a um, bit too much intrigue for us. So yeah, um, notice what it says about France, uh, betray their allies without second thoughts. So that's, okay. yeah, France is scum. We should, we should kill them. Listen, uh, honestly, like I, when I play in, um, when I play Civ Five, all the, like, I mean, obviously I still do all the time. Um, I, I always get really fed up with, like, the Ottomans and, uh, the Americans in the game, because, like, yo, 
the Ottomans in this, I think it's hilarious how much people, like, hate the Ottomans as well. Like, in EU4, it's either they're the best or the worst, and it's basically the same in Civ. Like, people, like, the AI for the Ottomans is just... <laughs> Especially when you start playing on the harder modes, like, Deity and, like, King and stuff like that. Like, just... Oof. Angry. Yeah, the Ottomans gets a lot of flack, because they're they're basically one of the easiest countries you can start with. 